and welcome mindsetters to this session of physical science for you grade 11s make sure that you have your three p's out your pens pads and your phones to make sure that you're chatting to me but before we get to that i'm ty and i'm here with tracy who's gonna be taking us through today's session tracy how are you thank you ty feeling tall today sorry very, i didn't, I didn't really put the heels on eh? anyway moving on today actually mm -hmm. we're doing forces it's very exciting we've got awesome. a nice awesome. little demonstration so i'm going to need your help and we're going to look at friction and we're going to cool. look at static friction mm -hmm. and then what we're going to do is we're going to do some calculations it's one of those sections which is uh, uh -huh. you get it or you don't some brain work is necessary yeah and i think th i'm hoping that the demonstration is just going to make it easier for them to see what we're doing, where we're going, all of that sort of stuff. So all right, yeah. awesome. So cool. while you go and set up, mindsetters, you know the drill. You know you guys were in grade 10 last year, now you're in grade 11. So hey, you know, you should know by now. Make sure you chat to me on the page, www.facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And don't forget to also visit our site, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn forward slash extra forward slash live so you guys can get all of the schedules and notes so you can follow along with us and know what's coming up next in terms of the subjects and all that kind of stuff so make sure you use those resources but for me as ty i'm going to hand over to tracy who's going to continue the show tracy take it away Thank you, Ty. Okay, well, guys, today we're going to look at forces. It's vi uh, I actually quite like this section. I know sometimes you guys don't, but it's actually a nice section. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to look at several things. So we're going to look at the definition of static friction, definition of kinetic friction. We're going to hopefully help you understand the concept of the normal force, and we're going to investigate forces on an inclined plane. In specific, we're looking at friction. So that's actually where we're going to start. So... We're going to do a bit of a demonstration, and I'm going to talk you through what we're going to do. And this could also be a really nice way for you to calculate the coefficient of friction. Okay, this is a way we can calculate things. Now, what are we going to do? Well, the question that we, wanna ha we want answered today is what happens to the maximum kinetic friction when we change the type of surface on a slope if the object stays the same? That's my investigative question, okay? And I want you to see something here. This is really important because in your exams and stuff, you're going to get often asked to write an investigative question. First rule is it mustn't be a question that you can answer with a yes or a no. So I couldn't ask, does the type of su um, surface affect friction? Yes, that would be a yes or no answer. So that's not a good investigative question at all. But what happens says okay we're looking for a relationship sometimes that's mathematical sometimes it's not okay so what happens then we've got to have our variable so we say what happens when the ma to the maximum static friction so that's what we're going to be measuring so that's my dependent variable when we change the type of surface independent i'm controlling it when the object stays the same, control variable, okay? Relationship, independent variable, dependent variable, control variable, okay? Simple, simple, simple demonstration, which we're going to get tight to help me in a second. Awesome. We're going we're gonna to place a box. We've actually got a mass piece from a trolley onto a nice wooden plank. Then we're going to lift the plank to just when, the, when my my uh, mass piece starts to move. That means that I've overcome friction, okay? We lift it up, and when it starts to move, the force of gravity, at pulling it down is enough, okay? So it's, it, friction is no longer holding it from moving, okay? Then we're going to measure the height of the slope. We're going to mark it on a meter rule, and we're going to repeat it, but we're going to put different stuff on it. So we've got carpet, we've got some, we've got a, a, a rubber mat, we've got a towel, we even got the other side, it's got a nice shiny mirror on it, so we've got smooth surfaces. And then, once we get an idea that we're going to say, we're going to see if you can describe the relationship between the types of surfaces and the friction. So in other words, what we're looking at is, do you think... So this is, this is what you need to think about as we do this. Do you think smooth surfaces have more friction or less friction? Do you think r the roughness of the surface is important? Will that make it have greater friction, less friction? Remember, I'm keeping the object the same. So weight is not an issue, okay? And then we'll see from there. So 
Ty, my friend. Yes. You're going to need to come over here. So we're going to go and investigate quickly. All righty. Okay, so what we have here, it's very simple. Um, you can stand over here. Okay. okay. And we've got all my goodies. You see, that's awesome. what I'm Yep, there we go. And we have a mass piece. It's about a kilogram in, in weight, so it's just nice and heavy. We don't want something too light because if it's too light, well, then it just... Kind of defeats the whole point. A little mass doesn't play that much of a role as such, mm -hmm. but this has got nice weight, so you know it's not going to, you know, you're not going to lift it like this much and it's going to start moving. So we have our meter rules. Now, these, we, we're just going to mark them. I'm not too concerned. I've got a whole bunch of pens. We're going to do different colors. So we're going to see how ambidextrous you are right now. All righty. Okay, so we have our, now don't lift it too, too quickly, otherwise okay. we're going to defeat the object. So I'm going to put it there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Ty, lift the, if I need you to lift it up for me. Okay. Lift, uh, uh, okay. It's not moving. Lights are not so static. Keep lifting. It could take a while. Keep lifting. Oh, oh, okay. Keep lifting. Keep lifting. Ooh, okay, Ooh. there we go. Did you see? Get, okay, let's try that again so we can sort of, you see that it moves? Not moving. Okay, the entire lifts it. Okay, and now watch. It starts almost, almost, almost. There it is. There we go. Wow. Okay. Just, why did you put it down? I need to measure the height. Sorry. There it really? Is. I remember some where my arms went. Some <laughs> assistance. Okay. But watch. We'll, we can see it anyway because we can put that on and it's going to move. So it's, it's fine. It's just, it's roughness. Now remember every time, this is wood. So that changes. Okay. So what we're going to do is over here and let's mark it. Okay. So. Oh, wow. That was actually pretty cool. We got it. 23, I did mark it the wrong way around, so it's actually 27. Don't tell anyone. Should have marked it this way. <laughs> anyway, we'll just keep it this way anyway. So this is just the wood. Now, let's think about this. Instead of the wood, okay, you can put it flat again. Okay. I'm going to use, this is like the rubber mat we put in a car, okay? Mm -hmm. And we're going to use this side. Now, why... Why would we put, Ty, you can, you can answer this for me. Why would we have this in the car? What, what, what's its purpose besides keeping the car clean? Well, that's also for our shoes not to slip. Right, shoes not to slip. So, so we would think that it would need lots of friction. Yes. Perhaps, because mm. we don't want it, to, especially us girls, when there's like... And there's heels <laughs> involved and mm. the sandals. It gets, it just gets messy. messy, yeah. So we're going to do the same thing, okay? Mm. So I'm going to put this on here. So Ty, go for it. I think we know what we're trying to do this time. And we'll see, and we'll see if we can get it any different. It already looks like it's going differently. Yeah. Okay. So okay. we're going to see. There. Ooh. There, there, there. there we go. Now, I want you to note this. Keep it there. Sorry, it's just your workout for the day. It's, it's all can good. you see it's moving very, very slightly? But that's exactly what we want. We don't want a rubber mat that's so smooth, because some rubber mats are still smooth, that this just sl Lies slides off. down. Because if you move a little bit higher... There we go. This is actually, there we go. That's what we wanted, okay? So, I'm now going to use the green pen. We're actually going to lift it. See, I'm still going to do the same around, so it's okay. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> Might as well. And here we go. So, actually, that made a difference. If we can see, you can put it down again. That made a difference in how to one, two, three, four. Almost five centimeters. That's a lot. That's a big angle, okay? So this, the rubber mat's got lots of friction. Let's try the carpet, okay? So let's try the carpet. We all love these things, okay? Yes. And we feel it. The carpet's quite rough. This is, this is nice industrial. Especially barefoot. They're awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, actually, I actually quite like walking on a carpet <laughs> like this one's barefoot. Anyway, moving on. This, but it's quite rough. This is, this, this is a hard carpet. This is industrial carpet. This is what most industry mm. have because it's and nice and, and, and offices and stuff. And we don't want it to have a lot of slip, so we expect it to have a lot of grip. It's rough. Mm. So let, should we see? Okay, there we go. Off we go. Let's see how we do because we can make a prediction. I'm not going to make one for you. I'm just not sure. I mean, ooh. Ooh, look at that. It's trying. Oh, there but now watch when this goes. Ah, Look how much are. faster it goes. That was brilliant, okay? Because with the rubber, it started to go, and then it took a long time, but so it, it still had, down, yeah. had a lot of grip, which means it actually has a lot of kinetic friction. This, which we'll explain in a second. So let's do it here, and there it is. And, oh, look at that. It's 
that, so this was the wood, that was the rubber, and then this blue mark over here is the carpet. So it's less than the rubber, which makes sense, I think, because it slid nice and easily down there once it started moving. Okay, so that was pretty cool. I like that. Okay, we have two more surfaces to go. Okay, now we have a towel. Oh, looks like, there we go. So now we've got a towel, and towels, are, ooh, we like towels after a bath. And This one's going to be a hard prediction, because for us, as we feel, it actually feels quite rough, mm -hmm. okay, because of the, the, the pile on it and stuff, but it's definitely not as rough as the carpet. carpet. So let's see where it goes, okay? So there we go. Let's see. Okay. Going up. Going up. Ooh, look at look how low that is. And look how nicely it slides. Slid all the way. Very nice. Now that's actually quite important. So let's see. Ooh, it's wow. It's very low. There we go. Look at that. Mm, way lower. And compared to now this is the low. So even compared to just the plain wood, which in our natural, sometimes we, we sort of go, that doesn't make sense because this feels rougher, but it's the type of material. The wood, even though we can't see it, has, has lots of rough areas in it, and that's what makes, gives it its friction. We've got one more surface to try. So, so Ty, you're almost done with your, with your weightlifting for the day. It's all so I need, me. let's turn this over because what we have here is a mirror, okay? Now, the only reason why we're using the mirror is it's uh, good enough for glass. Mm, so this is the smoothest we've had out of all of them. So we should get it to slide, slide. down quite nicely, hopefully without any scratching noises. So Or breaking it. <laughs> Seven or years of bad luck. Yeah, breaking <laughs> it would be bad. <laughs> no. Anyway, so go for it, Ty. Let's see how we do without messing up the lights in the studio. Now, mm -hmm. this is interesting. That is. Look there at that. There go. But look at the difference. It goes down. It's nice, but I wanted to show you again that it's starting to move. And it oh, mm. it's okay. I got told that wouldn't be a problem. Okay, let's not do it in blue because I think we'll miss where it is. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do it here. Ooh, there we go. So it's my last red one. Thanks, Ty. It's a pleasure. So can, can I leave now? You can go back oh. to your p post <laughs> and talk to our mindsetters. Let me just do this Ooh, without me losing my glasses. Okay, that's when there's no friction between the glasses your and your and face. <laughs> okay, so if you look here, that's the, that's the mirror, the one at the bottom here. That was the towel. Now, instinctively, I, w I actually really did think the mirror would be, s would be lower but it's all to do with the surface, okay? So let's go back to the board because we have a couple of questions that we need to answer about what we just did, okay? So we're gonna go back to the board. And the whole point of this was we were asking, can we describe the relationship between the type of surface and the amount of friction experienced? Well, the surface does affect how much friction you get. And in fact, the, the rougher the surface, the more friction we experience, though we have to be careful with that because the rubber mat appears quite smooth. So if we feel it with our hands, it feels smooth. So it's a, a, that's a bit of a difficult description because even between the towel and the mirror, which is those two at the bottom, which are so close to my hand, the towel feels a little rougher. So rough is a difficult, it's a difficult one to put into words. So what we're actually looking for is the microscopic, is what, what's happening microscopically. Because in any surface, we can actually draw it as being, well, any surface microscopically has bits coming up and down and in and out, and they're not actually smooth. We can't see that. So when we put another surface on top of it, so this is one object, and then we put another surface on top of it that's also got all these little ridges and things on it. When these two parts of the surfaces interact with each other, that's what causes the friction, okay? But from my 
my um, meter rule, though I did put it upside down, and it's not, a, it's not a problem, though. My challenge to you is to do this with the meter rule the right way around, extend your maths a little bit, and see if you can work out what the coefficient is, because this, this is exactly how you can do it, okay? Because we can get this, so it makes lots of sense. With the, gr the green was the, was the rubber, then we had the carpet, this, this was my wood, this was the glass, and then there, there was my towel. So I can really see the height makes a big, is, is very, very important, okay? So the relationship between the type of surface and the amount of friction experienced by the box is that the rougher the surface, the greater the amount of friction, Okay, and I think time, that's a good place to take a break because then afterwards we'll actually put this into equation form. Awesome. So, mindset is, don't disappear. Do yourself a favor. Get on the page, get chatting to us. Let us know what you guys are thinking. If you're lost and if you need help, post on the page. But for now, we're going to take a, a tiny, when I mean tiny, tiny, it's, it's small. So make sure you stick around. We'll be back after the break. <laughs> And welcome back, grade 11s. I hope you had a nice little break there. Now you're back, you're ready, you've done whatever you had to do. You went to the bathroom, you went to go get water. Whatever you had to do, now you're back, you're focused, and you're going to be sitting down with your three Ps, pens, pad, and your phone, so you can chat to me while making notes, because it's super important. Aha. Uh -huh. So now we have a session to do, so I'm going to hand it over to Tracy. Tracy, take it away. Thank you, Ty. So what we need to do now Great 11s is we now need to take what we've seen, the whole thing with it not moving, and we need to formalize it. So the first thing we're going to ask is, what is friction? You have heard this term since you were knee-high to a grasshopper. You've heard it all the time. We would have dealt a lot with it last year. A lot of times we would just said ignore friction because it makes life difficult. And if we're going to define friction, we define it as the force that acts parallel to the plane or level of motion, just to get all nice complicated, but is always directed in the opposite direction to the force causing motion. This is really important. What am I saying to you? Even on the slope that we just used, the friction goes with the slope. So if we are on a, whether we're on a straight plane, so whether we have, let's do it here, so whether we have an object that's going to be on a straight plane or an angle, friction, so here's my object, friction acts parallel to the plane. The direction it's going to act in depends on the force that we push onto the object. So if I push my object to the right, friction will act on the plane to the left. Friction never helps. Friction never, ever helps. Friction always opposes motion. Now, we got quite complicated because we were using a slope, but if I put my object here, like my mass piece, and with the slope that we just did, it was actually gravity that was acting down. We'll get down to its components in a second. But essentially what that means is that there was an object that's pulling it that way on my slope, which then means friction acts up the slope in the opposite direction, okay? So the parallel means whatever plane it's on, friction is always parallel to that plane, irrespective. If we now look at my object, and I said, well, we just let it go down with, with gravity because it was easier, but I could have, so if we change this and we say, okay, fine, let's, let's not pull it down the slope, let's pull it up the slope. So we're gonna now apply a force that makes it go up the slope. Friction now changes direction because friction now opposes what we've just done. So friction acts down the slope. Friction is like that friend who never ever agrees with you, okay? Friction is like that friend who always says the opposite to you. You, you all have someone like that in your life where if you say something's white, they're gonna tell you it's black, okay? If you tell them that something's hot, they're gonna tell you it's cold. We all know people like that. Yes, we, yes do. we do. Okay, so that's what friction is. Friction doesn't help us. Friction opposes motion. That opposition to motion can mean two things. 
that the object doesn't move at all, or the object can start slowing down because of it, okay? Also, so it can mean three things. The object will move at constant velocity. Now, we've been talking about static friction and kinetic friction, but what does that mean? Static friction is the resistance, resistance that a surface of an object offers another contact surface, very important, contact surface, if there is no relative motion between the objects. With the slope experiment that we were doing, as I lift the slope up, my object, my weight wasn't moving, my mass piece wasn't moving. That static friction that's stopping it from moving, till eventually we just get it to start moving. That's the maximum static friction, okay? Static means not moving. You did static electricity last year in grade 10. You did it in grade 9, hopefully. You know that's electri electricity that's not moving, so it's charges that aren't moving, okay? So static, static friction is when there's no motion. Please note that we say in relative motion between the objects because only one of the objects has to move, not both. Sometimes both are moving when we've got kinetic friction, but only one has to move. When there's static friction, both are stationary, okay? Both are stationary. Neither, neither, neither must move. So how do we work this out? Now, this is where life gets exciting, and we start looking at our equations. And our equation says to us, static friction, Fs, and it's a little f, okay, is equal to this funny little sign that almost looks like a micro sign and is it's actually called mu, okay, mu s times the normal force. Mm. Hopefully we all remember what normal force, we'll do it in a second. For just This is typed, so sometimes you, you're not sure how to write mu. Mu looks like a u with its tail in the wrong place. Okay. Or almost like a cursive Y that's turned backwards. Okay, and it's mu. It's one of, I think it's a Greek letter. But it's a coefficient. This coefficient, that's actually what we can calculate from the experiment we did. Because that coefficient is a constant between, if, uh, and there's a whole bunch of them. You don't need to learn the constants. You'll be able to work them out or you'll be given them. So if we look at two different types of wood next on top of each other, sliding across each other, there would be a coefficient of friction, um, static friction. If we look at, and this is how industrial carpets are designed, actually, is the designer, especially depending on where the carpet needs to be used, the designer would look at, well, if I have somebody that's got um, rubber soles on their shoes, what would the, the static friction be between their so the soles of their shoes and the carpet and the fabric we use in the carpet and the roughness of the carpet and all of that sort of stuff because that's important, okay? You don't want a carpet where your workers are going to go slip sliding all over the place because you're going to get sued a lot. Okay, moving on. Coefficient is a constant. This constant has no units, okay? No units whatsoever. What this equation is telling me, though, is that my frictional force, my static friction, is proportional to my normal force. So if my normal force increases, and we can increase normal force by increasing mass, then my frictional force increases. Okay, there's a direct relationship between those two. It's important that we know this, okay? However, once my object is no longer moving, the friction can no longer be static. That means our friction turns into kinetic friction. Kinetic energy, energy of motion. So kinetic friction means that our ob the, the objects are now moving. Don't have to have both moving. As long as one is moving, so with our experiment we did, our platform, our ramp, didn't move. My mass moved, okay? So once it starts moving, that mass piece is now experiencing kinetic friction, okay? That's kinetic friction. So there is a re relationship, and they've got to be moving relative motion, contact surface, okay? Relative motion, contact surfaces. Look at the equation. 
it looks almost the same as the last one, except now we're using little fk, kinetic friction. Mu is mu k. So with coefficients of static friction, it was mu s. Now I'm looking at mu k, and still it has a relationship with the normal force. So the normal force is really important. Okay? Normal force is important. But what is the normal force? I hear you screaming at the TV. Well, okay, my diagram's a little light. I'll redraw it for you guys. The normal force is always equal in size, but opposite, so we've got equal in size, but opposite in direction of the force that the object exerts on the contact area. So what we have is, uh, let's, okay, we'll make it a white box, is here's my object, okay, unfortunately, oh, no, that's, I wanted that. So my object, let's make it a little bigger. Come now. No, no. Okay, we're just going to leave it that side. Uh, there we go. See it? I'm just telling you, it's very important to, to talk to your technology. It, it, it helps. Okay, now, on the object. The object has gravity, which acts down, Fg. Okay, none of you are going to argue with that one for me, with me because you know it's got mass. It's got weight, okay? So weight, that's Fg. You learnt in grade nine, hopefully, that for every action there's an equal opposite reaction. So when body A exerts a force on body B, body B exerts a force back on body A. We need to, that's Newton's third law, which you're going to do again this year. But we've got to think about this carefully. If the box is sitting on my object, if the object did not exert a force back on the box, the box would fall. Okay? If the force that the object, that the surface exerted on my box was bigger than my m weight, then for some really obscure reason, it would start floating in the air. That's also a problem, okay? So these two are actually equal. So we get the normal force, which go, ooh, that's not an arrow. Let's put an arrow back there. The normal force does that, okay? Fn, the normal force. It is a reaction force. It's probably what you've learned about it before. When it's as simple as this, then my normal force is equal to my gravity. It's equal to weight. If my object's been pushed in this direction, so that's my applied force, then friction acts over here. That's what that shows me. Okay? Normal force, this is what I'm saying to you, is equal in size but opposite in direction of the force that the object exerts on the contact area. Horizontal, uh, when it's on a horizontal plane, that's easy. When we change this, and now we, we look at, and this is, we're just going to extend you a little bit here, okay? And we say, fine, let's put it on slope. Then my box, let's put him here. Okay, gravity acts vertically downwards every single time, no exception. That's Fg. That cannot change, straight down. My normal force acts here. That's the normal. That's 90 degrees, okay? So we actually need to now start looking at other things like components. We need to break up Fg, which we are going to do a little bit later on. But it's not necessarily equal to weight, so it's very important. But from the definition, it's got to act, and that's a terrible error. It's not even vaguely perpendicular. There we go, that's better. It's got to act perpendicular to the surface. No exceptions. So sometimes, like when it's a nice horizontal surface, it's going to be equal to Fg, which makes our lives easy. We like those. Sometimes we're going to have to look at things a little bit complicated, so it's not there. Now, you're going, oh, what do I do if there's, if there's components? 
we're going to do a problem like this in, in a little while. Okay, so I promise I'm going to show you how to solve this. Okay, so don't stress too much. I need you to get this concept. Static friction, friction with no motion. Kinetic friction, friction with motion. Also, kinetic friction is always, 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 always smaller than static. Okay, and it's constant. Static friction changes value till it reaches a maximum. And in fact, as we were lifting the platform up, the static friction was changing to compensate for, for the weight and the change in the angle until it couldn't anymore, until it got to its maximum. Then it started to move. So if static friction changes, kinetic friction is a constant, smaller than static, and your normal force is a reaction force essentially, and is always surface on the object at a right angle, okay? We're gonna get that. So I think it's time for a break, Ty, and then we're gonna do some calculations. Awesome. So mindset is, don't disappear. As I keep saying, keep on challenging me on the page. I'm loving the activity on the page. Keep on going. Let us know if you're lost and if you need help, even if you're just understanding and you just wanna say hi, just do it. But for now, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll see you after this. And welcome back, Mindsetters, to this session of Grade 11 Learn Extra. Yes, I hope, as I said before, you went and did whatever you had to do. You took a quick break. You took a breather. If you were smart, you were just sitting there watching the ads. Ha <laughs> ha. So you don't miss out on anything, which is super important because you need to be making notes, talking to me on the page, and letting me know what you guys are thinking because I can't read your mind through the camera, you know. I know it sometimes feels like that, you know, but, but it, it, it doesn't quite work like that. So. so anyway, we have a session to do, so I'm going to hand it over to Tracy. Tracy, take it away. Yeah, he's, he's trying to <laughs> curb back those superpowers, eh? <laughs> anyway, moving on. So let's look at some questions. So the first one we're going to look at is it says to us that a 50-kilogram crate is placed on a slope that makes an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal. Mm. Okay, the box does not slide down the slope. Calculate the magnitude and direction of the frictional force and the normal force. So now, grade elevens, draw a picture because drawing a picture always makes life easier. So we have a slope, whether you draw it up to the right, up to the left, doesn't matter, it, it really is your choice. I tend to draw it up to the, to the left because I don't know, I just do. So there's my slope. I need to know where my angle, where my horizontal is. So there's the horizontal. And we have an object on my slope. Um, let's, no, that's not what I want. We'll draw a box. So there's my box. And they said that that was ooh, 30 degrees. Okay. Then... They said to us that the object has a mass of 50 kilograms. That's quite important, so we'll put that in a second. So we're just going to make a note for ourselves that it was 50 kilograms. Let's just double check that I'm right. Yep, 50 kilograms. Now, they want us to calculate the normal force, and they want us to calculate the frictional force. So we say, okay, let's start with gravity straight down. That's okay, we can calculate Fg, not a problem. In fact, we can do that in a second. So that's weight, Fg, okay, cool. Friction is going to act up my slope, okay, good. And my normal is going to act that way. So this is friction, and it's going to be static friction because it's not moving. And that's my normal force. Now we've got to say to ourselves, okay, now we've got to find a way to relate this to my weight because weight is acting straight down, only force acting on the object, but weight is now almost like when I'm pulling something at an angle or I'm pushing a wheelbarrow or pushing a shopping trolley or something like that. The force is at an angle to the slope. So we're going to do a little bit of geometry here. And we go, well, actually, and I, I, I'm going to do it as a dotted line. 
there's a component of weight that does that. goes straight down, okay? Let's just make it so it's in line with the front of the, there we go. So part of my weight is I can now split it into two forces that together do the same thing. One of them acts straight down like that. And can you see by, right, by putting this one down here, it's actually in the same plane as my normal force? Now, I know they're not exactly 180 degrees from each other because I'm drawing it freehand, but they at 180. So we're going, okay, this works for us. Then, if we now draw another line at 90 degrees, right angle triangle, to this, because to my um, perpendicular component, I get this, okay? And that's, yeah, that'll do, okay? And this angle is 90 degrees. Now you're saying to yourself, but Tracy, why did you choose 90 degrees? Because the normal and my frictional force are also at 90 degrees to each other. So can you see what I've done? This is the for this force that's pulling coming down the slope this way is actually the force that's pulling my object down. This slope that's going perpendicular is actually the force that my normal force is going to be. So we go, okay, that's cool, we can do this. But I need more information. This angle here is 30 degrees. Now, we don't have the time, unfortunately, for me to show you the maths, but you're going to have to believe me on this, okay? Because the triangle that I formed here, oops, without me doing extra lines, the triangle that I formed here is a similar triangle to the one with the slope, okay? What do we call all these nice new lines I've put in here? This one is FG perpendicular, we use the perpendicular sign from maths, and this one is FG parallel, and we use the parallel sign for maths. So what am I saying to you? Your frictional force is equal to my parallel gravitational force, and my normal force is equal to my perpendicular component of my gravitational force. That's perfect. How do I know that they're equal? Because my object is stationary. No acceleration, it's not moving. That's enough information for me. So now we've got to decide how we can work this out. Okay, we're going to use some trick here, and we're going to go, fine. We are really only going to use sine, cos, and tan, so I want to quickly remind you that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, okay? If you've learned it X and Y's, I'm sorry, this is the best way to remember it for this. And cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So if I'm looking at, I want FG, FG perpendicular, sorry, is my lie is adjacent to my angle. So if I go cos theta, it's going to be equal to FG perpendicular divided by FG, which means that FG perpendicular is FG cos theta. And we remember that FG is mass times gravity, and that means we're going to take 50. I'll write it here as well. So it's MG cos theta, and we go, fine. We know M is 50. We know G is 9,8, not 10. And cos is 30 degrees. And I worked this out earlier, and I got 424,35. Okay? So therefore, my normal force is 424,35 newtons. Okay? We're not done yet, though, because that's just part one of the parts. Now we do the same for my, perpendic for my parallel. My parallel is opposite, so now I'm going to use sine. So now watch. If I go sine theta, it's my opposite side divided by my hypotenuse, so it's FG parallel divided by FG. 
which means sine 30 degrees. Oh, sorry, let me just go back here. Sine, um, let's do here. So that means, let me make sense of this, that if G parallel is if G sine theta, so it's my weight times the sine of my angle, and my weight is M times G. Okay, so now we're going to go 50 times 9,8 times sine 30. Okay, and 50 times 9,8 times sine 30 is 245 newtons. So that means that my static friction, which is what I wanted, which we already stated is equal to my perpendicular, sorry, my parallel, is 245 newtons. Okay, and I think, wow, that, that was a tough one, so I think it's time for a break. Mm, I think so too. Mm -hmm. Mindset is, if you agree, and that was a difficult one, why don't you just let me know on the page? Do not be shy. But on that note, also, don't disappear, because we'll be right back after this break. And welcome back, Mindsetters. Now, you know I've been saying this throughout the show. I need to stress it again. Make sure that you guys, if you have any teachers or brothers or all the sisters or people who used to mentor you who have now transitioned into the actual field of science and could help us develop content please let us know make sure you tell them them not yourselves if you guys have any questions go to help desk at learn extra.co.za or you can actually just hit us up on the page. But the email that you, your mentors and your teacher, anyone who's retired or anyone who's just wanted to help with the show, they can email content at mindset.co.za. Don't forget content at mindset.co.za. But right now we have a show to do. So make sure you're paying attention because, Tracy, take it away. Thank you, Ty. Okay, so guys, we're in the last stretch. We're going to do one last question. Actually home really run. Yeah, we're definitely there, and it's not that bad. The last one was a real doozy, but you guys coped. So they tell us, a block of wood weighing 32 newtons. Yay, we don't have to work out weight. We like it. So there's my weighing 32 newtons. It's placed on a rough, flat incline, and a rope is tied to it. Rough means there is friction, okay? Flat incline is a little bit of a contradiction in terms, but it means it's on a horizontal surface, and a rope is tied to it. The tension in the rope can be increased to 8 newtons before the block starts to slide. By increasing the tension in the rope to 8 newtons, by increasing the tension, it's like lifting the incline, okay? The first thing they want is calculate the coefficient of static friction. Okay, so situation is the following. We'll get to the next part in a second. Weight, block, 32 newtons, rope, pulling it at 8 newtons. Just starts to slide. What are they telling you? Okay, well, first of all, if that's my weight that's down, we know what Fg is. Fg is going to be equal to Fn. So my Fn is 32 newtons. My tension has increased to 8. It's just starting to move, the same as when I lifted the slope, which means my... Ooh, and my handwriting gets worse as the show gets on. My static friction is actually 8 newtons. They want mu. So, static friction is equal to mu s times fn. If s is 8, we want mu s. Fn is 32. Get mu s on its own, we divide both sides by 32. So it's 8 divided by 32, and we get naught. Ah, that doesn't look right. My, I'm gonna, no, I don't have a calculator. Um, it's naught comma 25. Okay, guys, no units. 
no units. Also, your coefficient generally is smaller than one. There are exceptions, but it's smaller than one. But then they say to you that, actually the second part wasn't here, they say to you in the question that the block starts to, starts to move and then it only requires four newtons of force to keep it moving. Now they want the kinetic energy, sorry, the, ki the coefficient of kinetic friction. Now it's four newtons for kinetic friction because there's only one force acting on it, which is one that's pulling it. It's got a constant velocity, no other forces, so we're happy. We want mu k, if n is 32, and now mu k is 0, 0,125. I'm just checking, there we go, 0, 0,125. No units. It is smaller than Fs because it's always easier to keep an object moving once it's moving than to start an object moving. Okay, static friction, bigger than kinetic friction. And I think we're done. So guys, we did a lot of stuff today. Go, go back, rethink about it, learn the definitions, make sure you do some more examples with the calculations, but we've done some really good, important work today. Ty, so I think we're done. Awesome. Yeah. And now I got my exercise on, you know. Good, it's important to, to lift you. stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes, mindsetters, do not forget to visit the updated, f the updated mindset page, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn forward slash extra forward slash live. We updated it for you guys because we want you guys to keep track of all the syllabus and everything that we want you guys to do. But for me as Ty and Tracy and everyone here, we want to sign off and say thank you so much for joining us today. This is the part where we say goodbye and cheers to you. You take care. Alrighty. Peace.